Deliver working software frequently, from a couple of weeks to a couple of months, with the preference to the shorter time scale. This is Agile principle number three. Picture finding yourself at the top of an unimaginably tall cliff. In fact, you're told that it will take two weeks to hit the bottom if you were to jump. As you carefully step back from the edge, you notice two groups of people, two teams working nearby. You find that these two teams are in a competition. Their task is to build a device that will let them travel through the air. They can choose whatever materials they like, but they must build their air travel machine in the air meaning they jump off the cliff together with all their supplies and attempt to assemble it into something that will save them from a catastrophic crash landing. Team A has a small pile of materials. It's mostly rope and large pieces of silk. Their team is small, just a handful of people. Team B, on the other hand, has a huge pile of things they intend to jump with. They have windows, sheet metal, rivets, autopilot computers, steering yokes, altimeters, radios, hundreds of leather seats, and the list goes on and on. Team B is huge. You lose count once you get to 97, and you're pretty sure you only counted a fraction of the members. In talking to each team, you discover they have two very different approaches to the problem. Team A figures they don't know much about how to build an aircraft, and they aren't really sure how long it will take. However, they do understand the basic principles of a parachute and have reasonable confidence that they can assemble one before they hit the ground. Team B's plan is quite different. They have detailed blueprints and a design of something that looks very much like a 747. You ask if they think they can get it built before hitting the ground. They tell you that that was a concern early on, but they have mitigated that risk by increasing the size of the team and adding more seats to the plane. As you ponder the madness of mind that might come up with this idea of a competition, one of the contest official approaches you and makes you an offer. You can join one of the teams. In fact, it's an offer you can't refuse. You must join one of the teams because very soon you're all going over the edge whether you're ready or not. Your eyes jump between the cliff, the small cluster of people in Team A, the mass of humanity in Team B, and just as you're about to state your choice, you wake up in a cold sweat. Which team were you going to choose? Team B is trying to deliver something awesome. They have a vision for an airliner and a plan to build it. Team A, on the other hand, seems to have a different priority. They are trying to deliver the simplest thing they possibly can that will prevent death. It just has to be functional and functional as soon as possible after the jump. As silly as this dream sounds, it illustrates this key principle from Agile. Deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference to the shorter time scale. No matter how incredible your plan is, software doesn't produce any value until it's actually doing something useful. A plan that tries to deliver something bigger over a longer timeline takes on a huge amount of risk. What if things take a lot longer than you expect? What if the budget gets cut halfway through the big piece of functionality you're trying to release? What if a competitor releases a product that requires redirecting all your efforts? All of those situations can be partially mitigated by delivering smaller amounts of functionality, but more frequently. The two teams in the dream are taking entirely different approaches to dealing with this type of risk. Team B is trying to mitigate risk by adding more people to the project and creating an even more complex system to handle the large number of people involved. Team A is going in the other direction and trying to focus on simplicity. Fortunately, you've probably never been in a situation where failure to deliver working code in two weeks would result in your untimely demise. But even though failure to deliver functionality doesn't produce catastrophic consequences, the value of delivering a series of small incremental improvements is something that many teams don't seem to understand as evidenced by the way they structure their work. I was working with a team that was writing code for the internet portal of a large bank. The business had identified a need to show notifications at the top of each page. The business analyst had created a very well-written list of requirements. He had defined several different types of notifications, the way the notifications would rotate on the pages, the priority of each notification, how it would be shown based on the notification type, as well as how scheduling of the notifications would function. While put a notification at the top of the web portal sounds simple, the actual scope was pretty significant and would have taken the development team quite a while to deliver. What would happen if the developers gave you part of this functionality before they did all of it, I ask? The business analyst asked what I meant, so I continued. How valuable would it be 
if you just had a text box on the admin screen. If you put something in that text box, it shows up as a notification. To remove it, you just delete whatever is in that text box. It isn't everything you want, but would it be valuable if you could just get that piece of functionality sooner? Then the developer spoke up, saying, everything you want may take four to six weeks to get coded and tested, but we might be able to do what Mark is describing in two days, or maybe even by this afternoon. The business analyst agreed that it wasn't everything he wanted, but said that just being able to put a notification up on the page gave him 90% of the value he was needing. And if he could get 90% of the value in a day versus 100% in four weeks, it would be silly to approach it in any other way. So that's what they did. About a day later, the business could add notifications to the employee portal, so we met to talk about how to do the next step of what the business wanted. The business analyst was very happy. They were using the new functionality and getting great feedback on how quickly it had been implemented. But when we started talking about whether we should add the scheduling or the rotation piece next, he stopped us. While they wanted the remaining features someday, he wanted to see if they could get a similar win with something else. If they could find another way to get a huge amount of value in just a few days, he wanted to do that next. They left the future enhancements on the backlog to be prioritized against other work and moved on to something else. Last time I talked to the team, they still hadn't implemented the enhancements to the notifications. Not because they weren't good ideas, but when development and business work together to try to deliver frequently and preferring shorter timescales, the value proposition changes in ways that lets the business make decisions that simply aren't possible when things take months to deliver. So let's go back to our dream of getting to jump off a ledge and build a plane or parachute on the way down. Most of us would probably opt for trying to build the parachute instead of a plane, simply because the risk of failure with creating a more complex solution is just too high. While building a notification system for an internet page isn't nearly as dramatic, it's the same idea, just without mortal consequences for failure. And that is why the third Agile principle is so important. It helps keep us focused on delivering smaller, frequent iterations to lower our risk and increase your team's chances of overall success. Deliver working software frequently, from a couple of weeks to a couple of months, with a preference to the shorter timescale.